So I have my January 2013 uh, Model S here, and it's got about 150,000 miles on it, and it's doing great. But uh, the cabin heat just stopped working, and we're in Rhode Island in January, uh, and it's about 18 degrees today. Uh, so uh, I need that cabin heat. So what are we gonna do? So we'll start off going to the main screen here. We'll go to service and we're gonna enable jack mode. This will stop the air suspension. This will stop the air suspension from trying to automatically level the car. And you see the little uh, red notification up there that jack mode is enabled. Then we'll come out and around to the uh, front passenger side. Uh, behind that wheel is where you'll find my DC to DC converter on these early models. Uh, I just got my jack under there. Uh, full disclosure, the only way I can get this regular jack under there is by putting my air suspension to the, uh, the full height. Uh, otherwise, I have to use this, this travel jack. Uh, to get it under there uh, so i put it up to full height and put it under there before putting it in jack mode uh, so you see that bought me a little bit of extra space from the ground all right we've got chalk in front of that front wheel and i already took off the lug nut caps and i loosened up the lug nuts a bit so i'm ready to uh jack this up all right, I jacked it up as high as my jack would go. I put those jack stands uh, next to my jack, uh, but those are just for extra security. Um, and I'm about to take this wheel off using the 13 16 end of my tire iron. So I got the tire off, and uh, this is the area I'm looking at for the DC to DC converter. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to remove uh, one clip, two clips, uh, three clips, um, maybe this 10 millimeter bolt, although I, I need a, a deep socket if I'm gonna I use my socket set on that, and maybe this clip up here as well. All right, so after removing five of these clips, um, I use some really small flathead screwdrivers to, to push on the two sides uh, and get up under and pry that center up, pop that middle up so I can pull out the pins. And then removing that 10 millimeter bolt, uh, I was able to, to pull back that wheel well cover so that I get uh, pretty nice access to this DC-DC converter. And uh, you can see where the high voltage wires are coming in up the bottom. And then uh, just to the right of where those go in, uh, you've got your cabin heater. And so the first thing I want to do is check to see if changing the fuse is going to be the, uh, the solution for me by checking continuity uh, between the positive side of the incoming high voltage connection and the outgoing cabin heater connection. All right, but first, before messing around with any of that, I want to shut down the car. So I'm going to power down the car by going to safety and security and then choosing power off. All right, that in addition to the next two steps I'm gonna do, uh, removing the high voltage connection and remo removing the 12 volt connection uh, will make this safe to work on. All right, so after powering the car off, I'm gonna go under the hood here and I'm gonna remove this panel and that panel to get access to uh, the fireman's loop, which will make sure that high voltage is disconnected. Uh, and then also access the 12 volt battery so I can disconnect the negative there and make sure that juice isn't flowing either. All right, so this should come off pretty easy. Well, and you can.
can already start to see the fireman's loop there, but I'm going to need better access. Plus, I'll need to get by that to get to the 12 volt. So I'm going to take up my filter. to remove this clip and I'm also going to need to remove this clip right here all right so after propping this piece up out of the way uh, I loosened up those 10 millimeter bolts on the sides of this pull that out uh, now I'll loosen this one up and take that flap out here's the fireman's loop and you're going to undo this clip right here by sticking a small screwdriver uh, under this red plastic and prying up. And then once you disconnect that, the high voltage system in the car should be shut down. But as always, to be safe, you're gonna check things. Uh, Check the any electronics you're going to work on to make sure they don't have any voltage going through them. Uh, right now, I got rid of the high voltage, but you're still going to have the low voltage 12 volts going, so that's the next step. All right, and so I use the clips on this to take this off, and then down here, I just removed an 8 millimeter bolt to remove the negative. And the 12 volts is powered down. All right, so we've got the car off, but I want to double check because high voltage from this car can kill you. So, uh, you know, you want to test your, your voltage checker on, on a known circuit. All right, make sure it's working. And then put it on all the things you're going to be touching. And it looks like we're good. All right, and so here I pulled out the red clip with a little, uh, little screwdriver, pried it out. And so then you can push up on the center part of the clip and pull this connection off for the cabin heater. All right, next up, I'm going to loosen up this nut here, take the cap off to access the wires for the high voltage. All right, so now I've got my... Uh, my multimeter set on continuity mode uh, and it's gonna beep when there's continuity so I'm checking to see between the negative first of the high voltage connection to the negative of the cabin heater and uh, that I'll expect there to be continuity let's see if I can do this with one hand Yeah, there you go. Negative, negative. It's continuity. Let's switch up to positive, to positive. And even when I put my phone down and do this with two hands, I cannot get it to beep. There's no continuity between the positive of the high voltage and the positive of the cabin heater. Uh, that tells me that uh, this fuse is blown. So I'm working on getting this DC-DC converter unhooked. Um, and most of the clips are coming off fine. Uh, this ground is uh, 11 sixteenths, so you'll need that. This uh, low voltage positive um, is a half inch, and be careful prying up that red cap that's on it. Uh, I was a little rough with it, and I just uh, kinda broke a chunk off. All right, so the uh, high voltage wires these metal, I wasn't sure looking at it exactly how I'd get it out, um, but once you get these black plastic clips to let go of their grab around here, which is kind of a pain because there's four hooks on each one, 
Um, and as you get one little hook off, the other side pops back on. Uh, but once you get those down and disconnect this, the bolts up here, uh, then you can just kind of wiggle these and pull them down. Uh, so I have, uh, I put, pulled off the clips along the sides. So I'm down to just uh, the, the antifreeze, the coolant in and out. And so I've got a bucket here, ready to catch some of the spill. Uh, hopefully there's not much, um, but I also have a couple of small plastic things that uh, hopefully should be able to plug up the end of the tubes as I take them off. All right, I managed to get the antifreeze lines off without too much spill, um, but you know, just be prepared with a bucket underneath. And uh, I squoze the, uh, the metal clips with the pliers, wiggled them down, and then with some needle nose pliers, just started to uh, stick that inside the tube a little bit and push it down, wiggle it back and forth as I pulled. Three now, um, you know, I, it's not the screws here you need to take off, but there's one bolt down here, the silver one. Uh, one up top, right there. And then there's one down right here. The DC converter out and uh, ready to be opened up. Uh, I got my fuse here. I got two, but I'm just gonna put one of them in. If this, that's the only one that's reading, that's dead. Uh, FWP40A14FA. I picked uh, each of these up for about 17 bucks on Amazon. Wedging this thing open, using a cup, couple of these uh, paint can openers to help wedge in there keep some pressure upwards, separate the two pieces of metal so I can get my knife in there. All right, so gradually I got this apart uh, using mainly a utility knife angled like this worked really well. And it's a good length where you think, uh, you know, it can reach in long enough to break that gasket, but not so long that you go in and cut the wires, which, you know, some of the people who have done this job thankfully warned me about how close some of the wires are to the edge here. So you really don't want to go too deep. You can complicate the job quite a bit. So next up, I'm going to test the fuse over here, uh, but I'm already positive uh, that it's dead and now I'm going to fish it out and put the new one in. All right, so again, I got my continuity tester. Uh, I just want to make sure that out of the two of these, fuses, I'm going to replace the right one so I can tell which one's dead by putting the continuity tester on the two ends of the fuse. All right, so I'm getting, uh, getting a good noise from that top fuse, but when I put it on both ends of the bottom fuse, nothing. So that's, that's my fuse there. Alright, so I got my old fuse here that I just took out, my new fuse here, got continuity, and uh, if you t take a look at them, they read uh, pretty much the exact same. Right, both uh, Bossman, 40 amp, 700 volt, so should be good. Now, positive, positive, we've got continuity that we didn't have before. Now, using a razor, I'm gonna clean up the old gasket and then put on a new one. Um, I'm using this, the right stuff because that's what um, Electrified Garage recommended in their video. Uh, obviously, I took a lot of uh, influence in this process uh, from their video, so uh, shout out to them. Once you seal up that DC DC converter and uh, make sure it's not going to get any water in there, uh, you put it back in. So, you know, one, uh, is that other one way up there? Two, three, and I was able to fish this one out while it was still off and find that. Uh, so, you tighten those up and then remake all your connections.